Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm Ali Hammer and today we're interviewing Roger Chauvin, the cloud executive from NAB. Roger, thank you so much for joining us today. NAB is a brand that obviously needs no introduction and many of us are well aware of NAB's digital transformation journey, but what would be great would be if you could dive deeper into the inner workings of the NAB cloud team. And to begin, I guess, tell us a little bit about yourself and your team. Yeah, sure. And thank you, Ali. Thanks so much for, for having me on the channel. So, uh, so I describe myself as an, as an infrastructure guy. I love designing, building and deploying infrastructure, especially at scale and, and the organizations that, that support these infrastructures. Um, I, and, and whether that's in data centers, networking, e-commerce or, or cloud, doesn't, doesn't, really, doesn't really matter. So I, I work most of my life in, in the Netherlands. I started really, I spent a lot of time at one of uh, or at the largest uh, cable operator uh, offering television, internet and telephony services to millions of subscribers in the country. I then moved to, to booking.com, the online travel agent, uh, uh, looking after data center networks and, and cloud. And most recently in 2019, I, uh, you know, I had the pleasure of, of leading NAP's cloud organization here in, in Australia. Um, and, and the cloud team basically looks after everything that, that's related to, to, the, to the cloud platforms at, uh, at NAP. And we enable the business to, to run the applications uh, that, that support our colleagues and, and our customers. And when I came, so, so, so in, in NAP started, you know, it's been running public cloud since, since 2012 with our first public facing uh, workload. But, but things got really serious about four years ago in 2018. Uh, and, and since that time, you know, we, we, we are now running more than 50% of our applications on public cloud, including very critical applications like, uh, like inter internet banking. So we're, uh, we're very serious about, uh, about public cloud. What a colorful career. And after four years of running and managing so many critical applications on the cloud, how do you actually manage your environment at such a large scale? Yeah, I think if, if I, I love the, the scalability topic, I think you can look at that both from a you know, technical perspective and, and an organizational or people perspective. So, so I'll try and, and, and cover cover both. But but from a from a technology perspective, I believe that to ensure you can scale, uh, it, it is really you know standardization is your is your friend and, and complexity is is your enemy because it's really important that you that you have you have to automate and and it's super hard to automate complexity. So. The, the more simplicity and standardization that you can drive, the easier it becomes. And you'll just be deploying multiple units of, of the same. You, know, you can call that horizontal scaling, if, uh, if, if, if you will, as opposed to vertical scaling, where you're just adding more power, but you, you'll hit ceilings. And, and that's definitely something you need to avoid when, when it comes to, to, uh, to scalability. And then it's just a matter of, of distributing the traffic or, or the load and, and over these units. And, and, and to make that more concrete, in AWS terminology, you know, we are deploying one application per landing zone or per AWS account, and we don't put them all into uh, in, in, into one one account, and that really helps with with scalability. Now, on the organizational and 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 and, and the people side, I think sort of the same applies. We try and organize also in you know in in, in smaller units or, or teams. So you, you will be familiar familiar with with the two pizza acronym or the two pizza team uh, acronym or or squads. And we try and do the same with, with very autonomous teams that can make decisions on their own and achieve a high velocity without too many dependencies on, on others. But I think automation plays a key role to reduce human effort uh, and avoid mistakes. Um, but it all comes, you know, you're, you're nothing without, without your people. So I think we, we've been pretty successful on the people side. We, we have a program that we initiated also about four years ago called, called the NAP Cloud Guild, where we heavily invest in maintaining and growing the skills uh, and, uh, of, of, our, um, of, of our colleagues through formalized training, informal training, communities of practice, uh, et cetera. So I think all these are really important elements uh, to, to ensure that we can continue to, uh, to achieve, uh, achieve scale. Well, Roger, I've definitely noticed that you guys at NAB take really good care of your staff and all the training. They're really lucky that you invest this much. So what I want to know as well is at your level of maturity and scale, how do you optimize your environment to get the best price and performance out of AWS? Because you guys do so much on the platform. So I'm really interested in yeah, how you optimize the environment. Yeah, great, great question. And, and, and a couple of things there. I think, you know, we're definitely trying to 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 optimize costs. One, one, one of the, the things we do is we we have a 
a FinOps uh, team that is constantly on the hunt for optimization opportunities you know, across, across our cloud, and wh whether that's on right-sizing or shutting down temporarily or removing resources that are, that are not used. And then with that, with that hunt, right, with the information they find, we, we, uh, we provide actionable insights to various groups in, in, in the banks or, or in, in the bank. One of them is the, the application uh, teams uh, and the other is, is, is technology senior management. So as an example, on, on the application teams, we, we provide weekly insights on optimization opportunities. Um, that they that they can uh, connection, for example, go from this machine type to to that machine type based on CPU, disk, uh, I/O, uh, etc. And on the on the management level, we provide uh, information on how many uh, right sizing or how many optimization opportunities we we have identified for within their domains, and then we we also track how we are implementing the, those opportunities. So it, it's really a very data-driven, transparent uh, approach that, that and, and with that, we, we, we try and, and, uh, and drive, you know, the, the, right, the right outcomes. Next to that, and we're, we're promoting spot instances, obviously, in, in our non-production environments, but also in, in production. The Cloud Guild I mentioned earlier, there's an education piece as well on, on cost and the, and the capabilities and the opportunities uh, that, are, uh, that are there. Um, and lastly, I'd say our, our cloud platform teams, they design, build, operate you know, the, the landing zones that we offer to, to our application uh, uh, teams. And so, so a lot of the heavy lifting is, is already is done, is done centrally. And the application teams can really focus on the application. So that helps us deliver uh, in, a, in a pretty efficient way uh, as well. Thank you so much. And Roger, as part of your journey to the cloud, how have you evolved your core infrastructure over the last few years? For example, what I want to know about is your network environment. Obviously, that, that's evolved quite a bit, a bit, and is still uh, still evolving. Where you know, four years ago, you know, most of our applications ran in the data centers, and, and cloud was just an external thing where, where a few of the, of the applications lived. Uh, and, and as an example there, connectivity between applications on cloud actually used to come back to the data center and, and, and then go back uh, out to the cloud, which, which doesn't really, it didn't really scale very well. So I think the horizontal scaling that I, that I mentioned early, we've, you know, we've had to invest. Uh, we saw some, some bottlenecks coming up, so we were proactive, luckily, and, 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 and could resolve these uh, prior to that, that becoming, becoming an issue, but it's, we're still transforming our, our, our network, our, our network core, but also we've implemented services like AMS uh, Transit Gateway to really help us scale and keep the traffic on cloud that needs to stay on cloud. And we're, we're in the middle of, of implementing AMS, uh, sorry, AWS uh, network, uh, network firewall. Well, it's crazy to think about how far you've come just in such a short amount of time and how much you've done in the cloud. So looking ahead into 2022, and it sounds crazy saying that, you know, just fresh into the new year, but what are some of the key areas um, of focus for your team in 2022? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll clearly continue to focus on, on efficiency uh, and that will come in, in, many, in many forms, whether that's implementing new cloud services on, on the platform that, that are more cost efficient, the right sizing, the our management opportunities that we uh, uh, that we see automation. I think that the the area that I'm most excited about is is talent. You know, by by the end of February, we'll have 300 you know new uh, new colleagues uh, joining us in in the form of interns, graduates, uh, people returning from career, career breaks, and, and Euro diverse employees as well. And I'm really excited about providing career opportunities uh, and helping helping them with these opportunities to develop a, a career in technology at, uh, at NAB. It, it actually makes us the largest uh, intern employ, employer in technology in Australia. So uh, really excited about that. That is amazing. I've got a huge smile on my face because if you say you're hiring 300 people, they're all going to go through that cloud, uh, cloud guild that you were talking about. So this is so exciting. You guys have done such an incredible job. I cannot wait to continue working with you, watching your journey. And uh, Roger, it was such a pleasure speaking to you today. So if anyone does have any questions for Roger or myself, please pop them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you so much, Ali. Appreciate it.